position, I, you know, I knew there were uh, factions uh, within KDFA, but in that position I was neutral to the effect that I treated everyone equally and with respect and expected that towards me in return, which I feel like I got. Um, however, I feel like since that time, whether you want to be, whether you're in a faction or not, you're put into one. Because I feel like I have been put into one. Um, because of questions maybe that I've asked people or things that I don't know. Um, and um, we have a fun drive that's going to start again on Wednesday. And today, I spent the whole day taking uh, messages off of a subs subscription room phone for people who have not received their premiums from the October fund drive. And, um, you know, and some of them have been dealt with, uh, several of them hadn't, I uh, left messages. Um, and uh, the fall fund drive, I, I started on October 3rd, and October 4th the fall fund drive started, so I was in the phone a lot, and it was a bear of a fund drive. And then, it, I also uh, was folding letters and sending out stuff, and I was sending out, not too long ago, the third copy of the reminder of pledges that people had made during that uh, fall fund drive. And the amount of money that it came, it, it boggled my mind actually because it was thousands of dollars that people had pledged that they had not paid at this third reminder. And I thought if they wanted that for tax deduction, they would have paid that. Like somebody pledged $3,000, it wasn't paid. Somebody pledged $2,000. So I, that sort of I blew my mind. So now we're coming up to another uh, fund driver, fund drive, and all of a sudden this uh, recall notice shows up in my mailbox, and I bring it in, and I, I don't know Tracy. Um, I ask questions, and then some people say, well, I never got it. And then I find out about this other one that you uh, got, uh, about how KPFA is waging war on workers and listeners. I didn't get that in the mail. I'm going, well, why not? So there must be different mailing lists is the conclusion that I come to. Was I taken off of that because I've been put in a faction? I mean, they're just questions that come to my mind. Um, all of this, no one trusts anyone at KPFA, unfortunately. Um, and, oh, and then there appeared in people's mailboxes this. You know, and I asked, where did this come from? And I was told, well, by KPFA workers who have a right to not have their names on. So, um, um, my second job, when I, after the fund drive, I uh, took off of the reception telephone 80 messages that had not been the line was full that had been filled up during that year. And 95% of those messages were very um, vicious, threatening, abusive, yeah, uh, language about if that morning show was not put back on, they would not support KPFA. And I mean, it, it, I was shocked. I had to delete them because it was so toxic. Um, uh, what, how people were expressing themselves about if that morning show didn't come back on. And, and I, I actually have come to this conclusion, I feel that there are people who would bring KPFA down if that morning show does not come back. I also um, want to just say that I should, you know, the KPFA mission statement, I believe, says something to the effect of that no one group should get, you know, more control than anyone else and that all groups in the community be given a voice. And I feel that's what the morning mix has finally done for KPFA. And um, it can bring in money if people support it. And um, KPFA also, I think, reflects, someone else brought this up, what is going on in society as a whole. There's racism, sexism, ageism, and homophobia within KPFA. But, you know, I walk out of that door at night and I say, 
The PFA has gone through this for 62 and a half years, and it will keep going on because people will come in and save it. So thank you very much, and I have to go.
and whipping up anger across the listenership about the mediocre morning show. I mean, like uh, Evangeline was saying about the messages, when I went down to support uh, the executive director's actions because they seemed to be in compliance with the rules to me, uh, there was people with hate in their eyes. I almost felt like I was going to get mobbed or something. I mean, it was crazy. So um, <clears throat> that's a not okay thing to do. I'm sorry. I don't care what you know, how right you are in your goals. You know, whipping up this hate on the part of the listenership is just wrong. Manipulating the reflexive pro labor reaction of misinformed listeners. It's like Pavlovian. Oh, they're trying to bust the union. You know, I mean, it was just cynical as hell. And folks my age don't like the station enough to listen to it, even if politically they're very progressive and radical. And Tracy understands that, and her aims, even if not always responsibly pursued, I guess, are towards opening up the station to the community. And that's what my aim is, too, as well. Tracy's vilifying opponents are aimed at maintaining their own hegemony, destroying threats to their own power, and keeping community accountability at bay, even if it means bringing the station down. So to address improprieties, Dan Siegel's intimate involvement with the Quan administration, whatever you choose to call his capacity there, certainly should have precluded his continuing holding office at KPFA. And this was never addressed by his powerful allies, demonstrating their cynical double standards and hypocrisy. Sometimes I wonder why I continue my involvement with the politics and governance at KPFA, especially now that there are perhaps bigger and better things that I could be doing with Occupy Oakland, my family, my art, and my business. But one must act out of love, and I love KPFA, and I get the sense that Tracy's persecutors love their jobs at KPFA, their agenda at KPFA, and love their power at KPFA, but maybe they don't love KPFA as much as those things. The purported drop in fundraising, I spoke about that earlier, I think is attributable to the PR war waged against the Pacifica Network by Save KPFA. The morning show was pretty mainstream and obnoxious, in my opinion, and I stopped listening when my wife pointed out it mostly consisted of Amy Allison telling me I had to get on Facebook every fucking morning. <laughs> I don't need to hear that shit, that's what I read the Oakland Tribune for or something, I don't know. I don't know how much weight you guys are putting on this hundred dollar dinner that Tracy treated the executive director to. Now, it was mentioned earlier by Kurtzhoff. If you like to eat fine food in the Bay Area, it's pretty damn easy to spend a hundred bucks these days. I wonder how much the Hallinans rack up when they do the town with their crumbs. Peter Frank again. I'm basically here for a track check. So I gotta say two things. I've been Larry Bensky for, I don't know, 40, 45 years, and I disagree with his whole position on this stuff. Uh, but when he was manager, he called me in when he had to fire some people and he had to do some other things. I don't think that when he was, the fact that he was, when he was very young, he worked for a magazine that turned out to be a front, makes him an agent at all. 1958, I was a student delegate to the National Student Association, which we found out about eight, ten years later was a CIA front. I don't think I'm a CIA agent. Uh, so I really reject that kind of attack and guilt by association. What I want to talk about, though, is, is the need for the layoffs and the money. Carol's not going to talk about this more. I've seen probably in my time 50 or 60 managers come and go. And most Pacific Station managers float on a sea of volunteerism and don't have much real effective power. You know, I have to really hand it to Andrew Phillips for hanging in there and doing a really good, yeah. strong job. Yeah. Yeah. What, tends to happen, what tends to happen is that people, get, people buy these by hiring people, part-time, full-time, and the staff level goes up and up and up. Now there's a multiplier, this is really important, there's a multiplier effect in Pacific Station budgets. About half of the budget is fixed, it's pg and &E, it's a transmitter, uh, it's, it's all the stuff you have no control about. So if you've got a balanced budget three or four years ago, let's say, and your income drops 10%, to stay in balance, there's nothing you can do except cut the staff by 20%. Income goes down by 15%, you have to cut the staff by 30% because it's to keep it in balance. And there was enormous internal pressure in the last period of time and other times too to not make those cuts, which is why KPFA went through its $1 million, $2 million reserve fund and would have brought us into bankruptcy had Pacific had not stepped in to do layoffs. That's the basic fiscal facts, and it's fairly important. To specifically function as it should in the flywheel, as a flywheel, where the things are not going properly internally. Thanks. Oh, and uh, Tracy is here. I suggest she sit down 
She's been in a nonstop Pacific board meeting the last three days, and she tells me she's had nine hours of sleep in three or four days. So it's wonderful she's here. Hi, my name is Keith Barton. Uh, I just want to suggest that maybe the problem is not in Berkeley, uh, that it's in New York, and that the problem is that uh, WBAI is, is uh, soaking up all the funds and not generating very much. And that's what's putting KPFA under the water. Uh, and I don't know the internal operations of Pacifica, but um, when I'm in New York, I listen to, K to WBI, and I'm just not impressed. I can imagine why no, not too many other people listen either. So maybe the solution is a Pacifica solution, and it doesn't necessarily involve us. Um, I'll throw that out. Hi, everybody. My name is Tracy Rosenberg. Um, I mean, I know a lot of you, and I also figure some of you have got a picture in your postcard or the picture in your mailbox. But maybe some of you haven't, so I just thought I'd go through that for the of introducing myself. Um, I want to apologize for not being here earlier. I, I was in Los Angeles at a Pacific National Board meeting. Just got off the plane at SFO and came over here. So it was as fast as I could get here. And as Peter nicely said, I'm totally exhausted. I might fall down. I'm going to try to be as coherent as I possibly can. But the joy of our wonderful democratic system is basically we had a 99-hour meeting interrupted by brief social events and naps. So it wasn't easy. Um, I'm looking at these kind of piece of paper and feeling a little bit overwhelmed in terms of going through it line by line because there are so many strange things inside of it. And I just heard about a hundred dollar dinner and I just heard about how WBAI is the source of all the trouble in the universe. So I'm going to kind of try to touch on all of those things as quickly as I can, but I will hang around afterwards and if you have specific questions or would like more information, I will stay as long afterwards to answer any questions directly that I can. Um, okay, so the first thing. Um, a postcard that came in my mailbox, at least, and might or might not have come in yours, said that I supported Pacifica management, and there was no way to fire Arlene Engelhardt and LaVar Williams without getting rid of me first, or something like that. I hope I'm paraphrasing that fairly correctly. I think that's what it said. Okay, that's what it said. Um, I guess what I will do is report back what is on the stream of, well, what was on the stream from the meeting this morning, which is that Arlene Englehart and LeVarne Williams were retained for the, for the third year of their contract at this meeting. So folks, it already happened, number one. Number two, I guess I can say this, it was by a margin of more than one vote. So for the record, done. Um, Yay! Otherwise, um, all right, let me try to touch on some of this briefly. Um, Okay, um, there's no such thing as drawing up a staff seniority list. Uh, the union draws up the staff seniority list. They give it out to all the staff. That's where I got it from, a staff um, who got one in a union office. I asked them if they had a seniority list, and they said, yeah, here. That was the horrible thing that happened. The reason that I did that is because I was going to a budgetary meeting because KPFA was losing. $550,000 or more. I think the figure actually came out at $585,000 for the second year in a half. I was a rep on the National Finance Committee. Um, I was working with the treasurer then, the LSB treasurer called Simon Pius, and everybody was saying to us, where the heck is your budget and what the heck are you going to cut? And we kept saying, well, we don't know really. The LSB hasn't done anything and we don't really have a budget and it's out of whack. And, and that answer wasn't going over very well. So I will admit, we called the ED and said, what's going on, and is KPFA ever going to have a budget, and um, what are we going to do here? Because uh, the one that we had at the moment was, I don't know, $400,000 out of whack, something like that. And it didn't seem to be getting not out of whack. Um, so yeah, we, we, we had a meeting. We talked about what would happen if we spent $400,000 less or $500,000 less, which seemed to be necessary. And at that particular moment that we were having that meeting, 
KPFA was more or less asking Pacifica for a loan to pay payroll checks. So it seemed like reality was enforcing that this might be necessary. Um, local control is great. It involves a balanced budget and paying your bills. Um, otherwise, the 501c3 that you are part of has the right to say, guys, what you're doing here isn't, isn't working. For WBAI, yes, WBAI uses a substantial amount of money. I think there's a couple of things to say about that. One, to be fair, their rent, KPFA owns its own building, is enormous. Oh my god, I'm not going to finish. Um, Okay, their rent is, is enormous. They have a transmitter on the Empire State Building that's insanely expensive. They have approximately 75% of the payroll of KPFA or less, and they raise approximately 8% of the listener support that, that KPFA does, which is pretty good with 75% of the staff. It's pretty much the same thing. They're not lucky enough to own their own building. Manhattan's expensive. It needs to be fixed. That said, KPFA lost a million dollars all by itself divisional budgets. The loss belongs to KPFA. The loss that we're not losing anymore. Um, finally, I didn't convince the PNB to deny anybody anything. I, I just spent four hours, um, four days at the PNB, and if I could convince them to do anything that I wanted, <laughs> things would be so incredibly different. Um, every once in a while, someone says, not that point, maybe I'll change my mind but it happens pretty rarely. Uh, the PNB does what the PNB does in the way that any group of 22 people makes a decision. I don't convince them of score. And I guess that's it.
wasn't on the verge of bankruptcy, it went bankrupt. Their independent auditor said if they didn't turn it around quickly, they would be forced into bankruptcy. And it's, uh, you can read his statement on our webpage, what he said. KPFA didn't lose money because of WBAI. WBAI lost money. KPFA lost money. WPFW lost money. The state network lost $5 million over a three-year period, and KPFA lost $1.5 million of that. The network was bankrupt, did not have the reserves to pay its debts. It has creditors out there right now today who could demand payment in full and force the network into bankruptcy by filing a lawsuit. Now those creditors happen to be Democracy Now! and Free Speech Radio News and neither one of them is going to do that. But they could. Because Pacifica doesn't have the money to pay them today what they owe them today. All right, so what happened? In the fall of 2010, faced with this situation, Arlene Englehart called a meeting. She asked the station management at that time and the four directors of the foundation from KPFA to the meeting to try to figure out what to do, to get some recommendations from them. The recommendations were, one, cut flashpoints and hard knock radio, or two, Let's look at the union seniority list. Arlene didn't do either one of those. She offered all of the station staff a, a voluntary layoff package. And after they took that layoff package, she looked at what was left and whether they'd cut enough, and they still had not quite cut enough money. She cut the morning show <coughs> staff because of all the program hosts on the air. Those two had the least seniority less than everybody else. Was it a good decision? Would I have made that decision? I really don't know. I honestly don't know whether I would have made that decision. But it was a, it was a rational decision based on looking at the union contract. Amy's layoff was upheld at by the NLRB as being as a result of economic necessity and upheld. Brian's did not go to the NLRB. We don't know whether it would have been upheld or not. But what he did instead was agree to come to take an hour's cut, and Pacifica agreed to keep him on, and several other people volunteered to keep him to take an hour's cut too, so they could afford to keep him on. That's what happened. You know, to spend a whole year screaming about this on the air and off about the evil Arlene Egelhardt and now Tracy Rosenberg is destructive and is costing the money a hell of a lot of the station a hell of a lot of money. People are sick of it. Thank you. Hello everybody. Um, my name is Raymond Barclow and um, I appreciate uh, your, your perseverance this evening. Um, Excuse me. Yes, sir. Is there a Gene Kaiser here? Uh, there's, a, there's a van waiting outside for you. He's, uh, he's been waiting for about 20 minutes. Um, this conflict, it's evident in the room this evening, is a long-standing conflict. And I think we might ask historically, why at this time is this conflict so intense? The history of KPFA has had a lot of internal divisions over the decades, but this one seems to me, in my experience in Berkeley, which goes back pretty far, this one seems to me to be more intense than KPFA has experienced previously and that the entire network has experienced previously. I'm going to suggest a, a way of resolving the conflict. And right off the bat, <coughs> I'm kind of guessing that my own suggestion is wrong because nobody else has come up with this suggestion. So if it were plausible, I wouldn't be the, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be talking to you and presenting it. And you, I doubt that you'll have heard it before. The war, the war that's going on is very destructive. And what happens in a, in, a, in a war is that people treat one another very, very badly. 
And so I think it, I think people when they when they say the other side has acted very very badly, they're correct because in war you don't treat other people well. And so I can I can think of one way of trying to resolve the war, and that would be to literally split the airwaves. There are two, there's what, there's KPFA, there's KPFB, and I think that they have different transmitters and they reach different audiences somehow, but one of the ways of sort of dealing with this would be to separate the two parties. My own sense of this is that these, the, the two parties are really deadlocked in a, in a conflict that's not going to go away. It's hardly really a personal conflict. I think it's very deeply a political conflict as well. And it's a conflict that's been going on for a really, really long time. My own interest happens to be German social democracy a century ago. And when I read some of the debates a century ago, when I read the, the congresses of the Social Democratic Party that were held annually, they remind me of when I come to one of these meetings. They're extremely divided. Could the airwaves be divided in this way? How would that work? I'm, I have no idea. But that would have sort of one, and I think there seems to be two major factions here. Perhaps one faction should govern one part of the airwaves and another faction should govern another part. I know that's a very <coughs> drastic remedy, but looking into the future, frankly, I don't see any other. Thank you for listening. to answer one thing about the, the so-called taking off of the morning show. Uh, there was, and I saw a memo from the, the union, CWA union, saying that any layoffs had to be done. Okay, the layoffs were urging to be done in seniority order, and also there was a memo that said um, they would not let their members support the morning show, and you've heard that. You should really think about that. That they they are they did not support. I mean, the morning mix. They, they wouldn't. Englehart had uh, planned to keep the morning show going, but the senior union, so-called union, it isn't. You know, a lot of things are happening in union movements these days, where lots of bureau, bureaucrats and unions are opposing themselves to rank and file. And this, so you know, just because it's a quote, union, it, you know, most of the staff at KPFA is not represented by this small group. But these long time people that have been there for many, many years put out a memo that I've seen, I have seen, that said, and it's on NDB, you can see a scanned copy of it too, that says that they weren't going to support the morning mix. They wouldn't give up the email uh, password, so they couldn't even use the same name. They had to change the name of the show. So th this uh, whole idea of getting rid of the morning show, they did that. Now, you know, okay, I don't want to be grumpy and awful and stuff, but I was at the Labor Commission meeting in Berkeley where our Labor <coughs> I got up there and said, if Brian wanted to bump, he could bump if he were qualified. Um, that was known way back at the very beginning. Um, th the main issue here, uh, Brian is like, thousands of times better at rhetoric than I am. But uh, does that mean he's, he should go, he's gonna get up here and say something, you know, I saw him jump up there when somebody said something a few minutes ago. And whatever he says, I guess the main thing is, have we had a town hall, just thank you guys for having this, because have we had a town hall meeting with all these years? Okay, let's have discussions. Why not? What are they afraid of? You know, I have a whole packet full of stuff where they got on the air the last two days, they've done all these devious little deeds to get their one viewpoint on the air without having fair discussions. That's the main thing. And for those of you who want to blame the new management, um, think about how it is to be at that station with this little group. Every time the management tries to do anything, these little long-term so-called union people threaten to sue this organization that has hardly any money. So, I mean, okay, maybe there shouldn't be management. Maybe it should all just be cooperative. Maybe it should all be local. But let's all discuss this together and see, instead of having one little group pushing these views on everybody else without an 
opposing viewpoint. Maybe there really is a need for people with the job of doing management there. I'm sorry, I know this woman wanted to speak, but I do know something about some of the stuff that's happening there, so thank you. I hope that before the night's out, that we'll hear from the interim manager and the interim program director, since they're here too. You're here next. Hi, my name is Peter Dumont, and I'm coming from a little different perspective, I think, than uh, most of the speakers. Uh, being a peace philosopher and a nonprofit founder, I brought a visual aid. So let me put that up first. So this is the logo and flag of the Star Alliance Foundation for All that was originally formed in 1985. And uh, we've been holding a vision and gradually, gradually gestating and developing it uh, philosophically. Uh, but I really have to share my excitement uh, to have a world that does come together. Uh, what attracted me to this event was the title, Truth and Unity Forum. Truth and Unity. Now those are very beautiful ideals, but when you try to unify any society, you have to have something to unify around, or that, that's kind of above the conflicts that are inherent and natural to any situation with a group. So uh, we take the human hand as our model. And this, this logo, if you see the natural correspondence with the hand, uh, for those who can't see, maybe radio listeners, but five stars in an arc with a rainbow that unifies the stars with that, uh, that image. And then uh, also comes down to rays that come to a point with a heart. So it's very much like the palm of the hand and the diversity of the fingers. And there are 30 bones in the hand, so maybe there could be about 30 primary peace principles that could unify society. Uh, things like integrity, truth, um, uh, things like uh, commitment to conflict resolution that's prompt and relatively respectful instead of so painful and protracted. Because KPFA uh, is not alone. Uh, so, so I'm suggesting two main points here. I do have some little handouts that anybody who's interested can take. Also, a little sign-up sheet for emails. Uh, the two main points would be try to maybe create a committee to focus on the ideals of KPFA. What do you really want to accomplish? The word mentioned uh, a vibrant, effective KPFA. So what would that look like? And really put attention on that on a consistent basis. It might bring the factions together. And the other thing would be the ideals themselves. Uh, the, uh, the ethical ideals that include things that are normally relegated to religion, like forgiveness and compassion, but they're very, very practical. Uh, communication, cooperation, and celebration for common goals, and above all, goodwill. The desire, maybe sometimes held in gritty determination, to have a good outcome. Not just a warm, fuzzy feeling of goodwill, but a determination to see a conflict through the communication and cooperation process to a good outcome. And good means from the vocabulary of peace and its derivation to fit well together. So how can the parts of KPFA fit well together and keep fitting well and keep adjusting and adjusting over a period of time? So maybe we can affiliate and change the world. So please consider that too. Right, thank you. By the way, we very badly, our little group is experiencing what we hope will be a, a Star Alliance spring, and uh, we need web volunteers. Most of all, if you go to our website at staralliance.org, you'll see why, but uh, it will improve soon, but any kind of attention from the community would be much appreciated. Okay, we've got about 20, I think about 20 minutes left. And, uh, I want to acknowledge the people who are listening on the live stream tonight on KPFA Pacifica. A couple questions that came in uh, are how can paid staff boycott a show that might bring in a might bring in high drive time funds. Six viewers want to know who funded the Slick Save KPA brochure. Okay. 
So, Stephanie? Well, I don't have answers to those questions. Um, my name is Stephanie Miyashiro. I actually come and serve as an outsider. I like KPFA a whole lot, not everything about it, but I've been knowing a few people working there and listening very hard to the different stories and realizing, yes, the description of dysfunctional family sounds like it really fits. People have gotten very personal, very intensely anti each other, but the thing that I heard, and there wasn't even here about this a lot back, that at that one something came up that I thought, ooh, what about that? And I was going to ask here more, can anybody give us more information about that? Which was, and then after, before I got up, a couple of people said a few things about it, which is that possibly there's an underlying, like we, we think the unifying thing we have is that everybody really wants to see KPFA survive. Right. But there is the possibility that maybe somebody doesn't. And that they're willing and actually are in the process of trying to push us into bankruptcy so they can get the license and make buildings or whatever. And I'm so concerned about that because you're not going to be able to negotiate that. You have to face that straight on. It's sort of like the occupies it, saying we're not going to try and bring the 1% in and give them their half space of time on our forum. They're saying we want to create our own and own it and, um, and you know, and the 1% can go do their own thing with their own money and whatever, but you have to get outside of their system and outside of their box and outside of their control to do that. As long as you're playing in their thing, like the idea of, and it's just like 9-11, that the fact that they got a Republican and a Democratic group together to make a commission report, that was supposed to make it fair, but it was a bullshit report. Had nothing to do with reality, but people bought it because it was supposedly fair. So we need to not buy into that kind of thinking about just how the other side have their say and that's equal. It's really not that. And so the guy who said something about this reminds me of a class war. I go, yeah, ultimately that's what it feels like to me. It's class war. And they don't want us to say that. But really, and, and feeling very much how much the crunch of the people who control the money is making it pretty close to impossible for someone like me to fight back. Because now I have to tell even some of my homeless friends I can't even afford to have them a dollar. Um, it's a crunch, like with this fundraising thing, I can maybe go down to get a day and help volunteer, but co committing cash is getting pretty nigh impossible, and it's funny because they keep increasing, well, the cost of my health care, for instance, it's more than, well, anyway, so that's at the personal level, but I'm thinking that that is the whole, the larger picture is that's what's happening in, the, in terms of the people running the money stuff. They are crunching and crunching and crunching, and people are feeling it. The thing that's working for us is that people feeling it are starting to go, I don't think we can tolerate this any longer. We need to do something. So we're in that space. We need to do something. The thing is, can we get it together to do that? And not, in some sense, be so nice about that piece of fairness. It is not fair right now what is happening to everybody. But that's so the question I have is, can we look at that? Because if it looks like what's the crunch is that we don't have the money, can we get ourselves together to pull that in? It is about pennies from millions of people coming together to be enough to stand up in some ways. It's got to be that. And finally, I'm trying to figure out a way to live without money. You know how to do that? Grow your own food. I mean, it's that sometimes. But um, so, and that's what they talk about you know, at the Octopi. So my kids are out there saying, I spent a year living off the land, seeing if I can survive in the woods without money. You know, that's, I'm listening out there. I think this is for the Octopi Meeting Project. You know, I mean, it's, it, it is really important. That's the other piece about KPFK, because what I see in the media press does not give the story. They're not out there. The news KPFK is bringing people to speak who are there, who are part of the group. So you get to hear. And if you're not out there, and I 
I see a lot of people don't get to go up. I don't get to camp, but I do get to go hang out and listen. And so it does feel like I get a whole different story from what's out there than what the press gives you. Or I guess people can get it, maybe some of it online. But <sighs> no major conclusion. I, that was my question. Can, is there more information about that piece, about what that piece might be, the, the funding crunch, and whether there are people who really want to see KPD down, and those people you do not negotiate with. You just have to set your limit and tell them, no, you don't get to do this, and we're going to come up with the funds without you.
Casey spends countless hours, I don't know how many days of the week, on, on these bloody Pacifica conference calls. If those of you who haven't had this experience, it's really something horrible. You sit on the phone for hours on end with people from all over the country, most of whom hate each other. You know, things are ugly here, they're ugly everywhere else. Some maybe not so ugly, maybe more ugly, I don't know. But then you put them all together on one phone call, and everybody's at each other's throat. And Tracy, and every, every station is, is in financial crisis, again, some more, some less. Tracy's on the National Finance Committee, she has been for I don't know how many years, and she sits through these endless meetings struggling to keep this damn ship afloat. You know, and uh, it's easy to take pot shots, but I don't know anybody else, certainly I haven't done a fraction of what she's done, I don't know anybody else who has put the, the, the time and the effort and the blood, sweat, and tears into trying to save this damn network. So if, if you know, if she gets to call, I just think it's a travesty. It's, a, it's just a betrayal of everything that we've tried to do with this network. Down like three minutes, maybe, and try to keep going a little bit yeah, over. How about yeah. those who have spoken for three minutes? Those who haven't spoken get five minutes. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's get everybody who's talking. Everybody who's Is that good? Uh, how the people feel? If everybody, if someone hasn't spoken. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Rick Sterling. Long time listener. I'm also active in the KPFA Outreach Committee. And a few. Uh, I'm really, I've worked hard for KPFA as a volunteer in the Outreach Committee where we've brought hundreds of new listeners to the station. Uh, in Contra Costa County, there's a Friends of KPFA that's starting up at Rossmore, 29 starting members. Uh, we're going to be showing the movie about KPFA, KPFA on the air in a couple of weeks out there. There'll probably be 50 or 60 people in the audience. Uh, so we're working hard. I, I, uh, am uh, very distressed by the faction fighting, as everybody here is. I applaud uh, Cynthia and the Berkeley Friends UU Church for convening this meeting tonight. I think it was a great initiative. I, I like, unlike some of the people who commented earlier, I thought the morning show was great. I thought the host on it did an outstanding job. They were highly skilled, and I listen to them day after day in pledge drives working their tails off, uh, obviously pouring their blood and sweat and tears into, the, into it, just as Dennis Bernstein and, and other people do, but you had a very talented team there, and I've listened to it for 25 years. Uh, that said, uh, the attacks on Pacifica that took place after the speech by Chris Hedges at the forum that took place at the church, um, by you know some of the people in the safe KPFA and this recall uh, drive against Tracy Rosen Rosenberg I think is really um, disruptive to be honest. Uh, unlike some of the people here, I don't think there is that much of a class divide. I think I think the the people on, on, on with safe safe KPFA are pretty much on the same same wavelength. We've got some differences, or there are differences, uh, different approaches to some things. Um, I like some of the stuff on the morning mix, some of it uh, not so much. But in any event, uh, I would like to see, earlier in the discussion tonight, we had a couple of people suggest mediation. And I think one way or another, it would be a really good thing to have to convene uh, different people from the different sides and see if there isn't a way to resolve this without a, uh, a battle to the death. Uh, I talked with Walter Turner back uh, six or nine months ago and raised with him the idea of 
can trying to gather some highly respected, neutral, uh, progressive people from the area uh, and just have people sit down with these people, let them underscore to both factions how essential KPFA is and how we cannot see it be driven into the ground or seriously damaged. So uh, mediation with a mediator, mediation with a panel of you know, widely respected, independent, semi-neutral, progressive people, uh, one way or another, I think the best thing would be to do something like that. Try to heal the wounds and make it stronger because obviously we're entering a new era where KPFA is going to be needed even more than it has. Thank you.